with the help of the goddess Belle Dandy, I, Tony Watley II, shall become the greatest adventurer of all time. Firebolt! Critic Guy here with the first anime review for Top 10 Month, and that's on the anime Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Now this anime, which is a mouthful to say, takes place in a very medieval setting where the gods came down from heaven in order to live among the inhabitants of what they call the lower world, and also seeking excitement, cause I guess living in heaven isn't exciting enough? I guess a land of eternal bliss where you get to lay on a cloud and play the harp can become very dull after a while. And to add to their excitement, many gods form familias, which are basically these small guilds where people are in service to their gods and are bestowed blessings upon them by their gods, which they then use to go fight these monsters in a dungeon. From there we follow the sole member of the goddess Hestia's familia, Belle Cornell, a novice avenger who, after an incident inside of the dungeon, strives to become a stronger adventurer. And while he's at and maybe even pick up some girls while he's inside the dungeon. I mean, it, that doesn't hurt. Now you all unanimously voted for this anime to be the first anime I review for top 10 month. And I have heard about this anime for quite some time now and been interested to check it out. And I also heard from the grapevine that the main goddess character, Hestia, her fashion where she has like this tie around her chest has become like a big fashion trend in Japan, which is Pretty damn interesting. I mean, shit, a comic started a fashion trend in Japan. Though, I guess that's not that weird. There have been trends that have been started in much more unusual ways. I mean, just look at YouTube. So now I watched the entirety of this series, and I gotta say, it was slow to start off, but once it picked up momentum, I actually got really sucked into it and I ended up enjoying it overall. And of course, what would a BCG anime review be without first discussing the animation? The animation done by JC Staff for this anime is solid. They had some really good character designs, very good use of vivid colors, and the action sequences were very well animated to the point where it made the scenes very thrilling and enjoyable to watch. And speaking of the action, the action sequences were quite thrilling to watch, with each one getting better and better as the series progressed. Some standouts were Episode 8, the Minotaur Battle, Episodes 10 and 11 where our main characters are still trapped in the dungeon, which really reminded me of when I was younger and I would play Pokemon, and I was in the cave and I had no escape rope, little potion, and my Pokemons were really weak after battling wave after wave of wild Pokemon because they would just endlessly just you take two steps and then you would have to fight another Pokemon and you're like oh shit oh my my strongest Pokemon's dead oh damn it that is what episodes 10 and 11 reminded me of you're weak you're exhausted you just want to get the hell out but every time you take a single step more waves of enemies come and you gotta just keep on thrashing and make your way out it was just exhausting and I felt the pain of the characters having to deal with just constantly being on guard. Oh, I needed a breather after that. And lastly, the entire final episode, which was just one huge battle of epicness. Now the anime's concept and overall MMORPG tone isn't anything really new as other animes have also tackled it, like SAO and Dot Hack. But the story was fun and it did give me a sense of adventure that I was looking for. I actually felt like I was with Belle in the dungeon just fighting monsters left to right and maybe even, you know, picking up some girls. Oh, what do you say, Belle? Let's go do it. And speaking of Belle, most of the characters were very entertaining and some of them actually got some really good development, especially our main character, Belle. Now, I won't lie, for the first six episodes of the anime, I found Belle to be a rather uninteresting and mundane MC. Like, there wasn't anything really spectacular about this character. He didn't have any characteristics that would make him stand out of the crowd of all the other MCs I've seen in animes like this. In fact, the way I pictured him, or the way I would describe him in the first six episodes, is he's basically Kirito without 
the badassery and Tatsumi without the charisma or humor. That's what the character reminded me of. But it was after episode 7 that everything changed. And it was at this point in the anime that I finally realized that Bill is actually a much more interesting and unique character than I gave him credit for. As most main characters of animes like this actually start off being rather strong and confident in their skills. Bell is the exact opposite of this trope, starting the anime off as a novice adventurer and someone who is pictured as being weak and scrawny and having to be saved constantly and has no real self-confidence in his skill. And in episode 8, this internal conflict that Bell was facing for the first few episodes became fully realized as Bell was finally facing this whole dilemma and I found it very interesting how he went from this novice to this really badass character that I actually ended up rooting for. Not to mention, he's an all-around stand-up guy. He deeply cares about other people, whether you're his friend, whether you betrayed him, whether you're his enemy. He just really cares and tries to protect everyone that he can. And in all honesty, how can you hate a character like that and not call yourself an asshole? And there are also other good characters in this anime as well, like Hestia, Bell's goddess who has a thing for him and is overall just cute and lovable. How could you really hate this girl? She's just a whole lot of fun throughout the anime. Some of her best moments is whenever she would just get jealous, whenever Belle would hang out with another girl. Those were just priceless. His companions that accompany him on his adventures, Lily and Weef, they have some really good development. They're likable characters to a degree. I mean, Lily kind of got on my nerves a couple of times, but she's an overall good character and gets a really good backstory. And they just make a really solid trio. And then we got Belle's wife. Waifu for Laifu, Eyes Wallenstein. Now, similar to Belle, at first, I didn't really like the character. I found her really boring and dull. There wasn't really anything interesting about her. But again, after episode 7, she slowly became my favorite love interest in the anime. And she actually kind of reminds me of one of my favorite anime characters, Rei from Evangelion. With a really cool demeanor, not really showing much emotion, just like this straight face. She seems very timid and shy, but is a skilled ass kicking warrior when she needs to be. She's just was a really interesting character and honestly I wish we could have learned a little bit more about her like get a backstory and her bond with Belle every moment that they shared I freaking loved it after episode 7 because that's when they actually started to bond more and I really started to feel a growing connection between them it was really cool now though I like this anime I do have a couple issues with it the first one and the one I've been hinting at throughout this review is the first six episodes I'm sorry, but they just didn't really captivate me or even suck me into this anime. I found them to be very dull and average from the characters to the plot to the force harem in the anime. And kind of branching off of the first six episodes, the main antagonist of the series, who I won't give away, is just really typical and cliche. There's nothing interesting or even really menacing about the character and it was just another character that's just overly obsessed with the main character again and I'm just like, oh, you, you bore me. And the last issue I had with this anime was with this character, Seer. She just isn't anything interesting and just comes off as a weak and forced love interest to add to Belle's harem. She doesn't really do anything in the anime to really make her stand out. She doesn't really even have a centric episode dedicated to her to where she could bond and build a relationship with Belle. We only get like small scenes here and there and those small scenes don't really build a foundation to really fill a connection between these characters. But overall, even with all its issues, I did end up really enjoying Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? And that's why I'm going to give this anime a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It is an enjoyable anime. But anyway, what did you guys think of this anime? Did you really enjoy it? Did you get a kick out of it? Or did you find it really boring and dull and you just didn't care? And I would like to know... How would you pick up girls in a dungeon? Comment below and let me know and hopefully I can bring back BCG as Black Critic Crew because this would make a really good BCG as Black Critic Crew but I gotta do the Game of Thrones one first and then maybe I'll get to these responses and do it for the next episode of BCG as Black Critic Crew and stay tuned tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the next BCG top 10 list. So until all these videos come guys, if you would like to be a part of the Black Critic Crew and not miss out on a single awesome video on this channel, please hit that subscribe button below, 
like this video if you really enjoyed it, and I'm Tony Wall the second, the Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace, YouTube.